VIP. Hello, AP Calculus BC students. Mr. Record here. Ice, ice, baby. Oh, yeah, we are in the middle of an ice storm here in Avon, Indiana, and we have an e-learning day. So we're going to talk a little bit about some vector-valued functions, particularly the positions and accelerations and vector and, and velocity vectors, and we're going to kind of manipulate them a little bit. If you're watching this video from outside of Avon, you very well could be watching this maybe in the middle of the summer. And ice, ice, baby, and ice and sleet probably doesn't make a lot of sense to you. But anyway, right now, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our example five. For my students, this is in your section 9.8 notes. Uh, we're, we've been talking about the position and velocity and the acceleration vectors. And in this particular problem, we are given the fact that a particle has an initial velocity uh, vector of i plus j and an initial position of the ordered pair 1, 1. We know that we have an acceleration vector associated with this as a t equals negative cosine ti plus sine tj. We are to find the location of the particle precisely at the time pi, when t is pi. So you, you've done problems like this in other, your previous uh, calculus classes most likely where you were trying to like move from a second derivative up to a original function and finding those constants of integrations along the way is really the key to this. And this is really no different. So the way that we're going to do this is, is pretty, pretty basic. It's pretty simple. We're going to say that our acceleration vector is, is what we're starting with. So we know we're going to have to take this guy and integrate him two times to turn him into a position vector. But along the way, we are going to have to figure out what the values of the constants of integrations are. So I might want to speak on that just momentarily. When we see that this initial velocity i plus j here is uh, given to us, what that means is that the velocity vector at time zero is going to be equivalent to that particular result, i plus j. So that's a clue that we can use to probably find some information once we arrive at our velocity function. Or, I'm sorry, our velocity vector. Now we also have the information about the initial position. Well, that's really the same idea, except we can use S or I'm gonna go ahead and use R. I know that might seem kind of strange to many of you, but in my particular classes, we have been using R for the position vector. Um, where I know we used S quite frequently for a position function. Really doesn't matter what you use, just avoid V and A, of course. So the initial position being at the point 1, 1 means something very interesting, and that is the fact that the position vector is also I plus J. Now you might wonder, well, wait a minute, this didn't say I plus J, but that's really the same thing. You know, when you're talking about being located at the point 1, 1, the vector that's associated with that is going to look like that. So we're good to go on our initial conditions. So the next step of the uh, problem is to go ahead and, and, and integrate this acceleration vector, A of t, with respect to t, and knowing good and well that that's going to provide the velocity vector. So Integrating negative cosine, taking the antiderivative of negative cosine would give us negative sine, but there is a constant of integration associated with this. We'll call it C1. And all of that can now be multiplied by vector i. Then we'll go ahead and take the antiderivative of sine, which is going to be negative cosine. So I'll be very careful here to add negative cosine of t. And we will use another subscript for our constant c. We'll use two this time. And it looks like we're in pretty good shape then with our general form for our velocity vector. But before we can move on, we need to figure out what these two values of c are going to be. And that's where this guy comes into play. So we know that the velocity at time zero can be calculated by entering zero for these t's. So of course, negative sine of zero is zero. So we just have C1. And then if we do the same thing for this particular piece, cosine of zero is one, already a negative in front. We'll make that minus 
and then we have a C2J. And then we were told that this is all equivalent to I plus J, right? That's what we have right here in this piece of information. So now it just comes time to match things up. And we know that the C1 is equivalent to one. And if negative C2 is equivalent to one, we could say that C2 is equivalent to negative one. So really what that means is that our velocity vector is much more specific now. It would be negative sine of t plus one i plus the negative cosine of t minus one times j. And from this point forward, really all that's going to be going on is essentially, whoops, essentially, not sure what happened there, we'll get rid of that, but essentially we are um, repeating this process. So we're going to go ahead and, and integrate, I'm going to use a, a little bit more room over here to the left, but if we integrate this velocity vector, we know that that is going to produce the position or r we used here, the r vector. And let's pull off that integral here. Antiderivative of negative sine of t plus one would be negative, negative cosine. So that would be positive cosine of t plus t, right? The antiderivative of one. And then we need yet another constant. I'm just gonna pick up with my subscripts where I left off and use three. And then we do the same thing for our j component. The antiderivative of negative cosine is indeed negative sine. We would have another minus t and then plus c4 times the j. Now we want to get very specific and find the exact position vector, knowing what c3 and c4 are going to be. So we use the fact that r evaluated at zero this is this thing up here is going to give us ij. So if we first of all plug in zero for t, here we will get one plus zero plus c3 times your unit vector i. And then with this other portion, all we will have remaining is c4 times j, since sine of t and t are both going to become zero. This is equivalent to i plus j once again. So that means the corresponding components will be equivalent. So one plus C3 is one, C4 is equal to one. So that forces C3 to be zero. So when we put it all together, finally putting this all together, R of T is going to be cosine T plus T plus the zero, which I won't write multiplied by i plus negative sine of t minus t plus our c4 which is one times j. Now if the problem just asked hey what is that final specific position vector I suppose we would be fine but we are asked to figure out exactly what our position is at time pi. So one less, one more step needs to be performed and that's just to plug pi in for t. Cosine of pi, of course, is negative one. And then I'll subtract the pi, or add the pi. I guess I could write that as pi minus one, nothing wrong with that, times i. And then if we plug pi in for t over here, negative sine of pi is zero, minus the t, which is minus pi in this case plus one, would all multiply by j. And I've told my students that I really don't have a problem if you express your final answer as this specific position vector, but you could also just extract those components and write them as an ordered pair. I'm gonna switch around the pi and the one there, might look a little bit better. And over here, I'll do the same thing. And we could come up with this ordered pair, which is also an acceptable final answer as well. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate it in this video, but my students, um, you do have the ability to sketch your vectors on the TI Inspire. And this is not a very difficult problem to um, verify whether or not the findings um, are indeed accurate. Uh, that's something that I plan on doing in a separate video down the road, showing you how that is carried out on the Inspire. But nonetheless, we do know that we have our position at the specific time that we want. 
So anyway, I hope this certainly helps out and we'll see you in the next video. Yo, VIP.